brought to you by wikivd.com. Keep. A keep is a type of fortified tower built within castles during the Middle Ages by European nobility. Scholars have debated the scope of the word keep, but usually consider it to refer to large towers in castles that were fortified residences, used as a refuge of last resort should the rest of the castle fall to an adversary. The first keeps were made of timber, and formed a key part of the Mott and Bailey castles that emerged in Normandy and Anjou. During the 10th century, the design spread to England as a result of the Norman invasion of 1066, and in turn spread into Wales during the second half of the 11th century, and into Ireland in the 1170s. The Anglo-Normans and French rulers began to build stone keeps. During the 10th and 11th centuries, these included Norman keeps with a square or rectangular design, and circular shell keeps. Stone keeps carried considerable political as well as military importance and could take up to a decade to build. During the 12th century, new designs began to be introduced in France. Quatrefoil-shaped keeps were introduced while in England polygonal towers were built. By the end of the century, French and English keep designs began to diverge. Philip II of France built a sequence of circular keeps as part of his bid to stamp his royal authority on his new territories, while in England castles were built without keeps. In Spain, keeps were increasingly incorporated into both Christian and Islamic castles. Although in Germany tall towers called Bergfriede were preferred to keeps in the Western fashion, in the second half of the 14th century, there was a resurgence in the building of keeps. In France, the keep at Vincennes began a fashion for tall, heavily machicolated designs, a trend adopted in Spain most prominently through the Valladolid School of Spanish Castle Design. Meanwhile, tower keeps in England became popular amongst the most wealthy nobles. These large keeps, each uniquely designed, formed part of the grandest castles built during the period. By the 16th century, however, keeps were slowly falling out of fashion as fortifications and residences. Many were destroyed in civil wars between the 17th and 18th centuries, or incorporated into gardens as an alternative to follies. During the 19th century, keeps became fashionable once again and in England and France a number were restored or redesigned by Gothic architects. Despite further damage to many French and Spanish keeps, during the wars of the 20th century, keeps now form an important part of the tourist and heritage industry in Europe. Etymology and historiography Since the 16th century, the English word keep has commonly referred to large towers in castles. The word originates from around 1375 to 1376, coming from the Middle English term keep, meaning basket or cask, and was a term applied to the shell keep at Geens, said to resemble a barrel. The term came to be used for other shell keeps by the 15th century. By the 17th century, the word keep lost its original reference to baskets or casks and was popularly assumed to have come from the Middle English word keep, meaning to hold or to protect. Early on, the use of the word keep became associated with the idea of a tower in a castle that would serve both as a fortified, high-status private residence and a refuge of last resort. The issue was complicated by the building of fortified Renaissance towers in Italy called Tenaza that were used as defences of last resort and were also named after the Italian fitter holder to keep. By the 19th century, Victorian historians incorrectly concluded that the etymology of the words keep and ten as were linked, and that all keeps had fulfilled this military function. As a result of this evolution in meaning, the use of the term keep in historical analysis today can be problematic. Contemporary medieval writers used various terms for the buildings we would today call keeps. In Latin, they are variously described as turris, turris castri a magna turris a tower, a castle tower, or a great tower. The 12th century French came to term them a donjon, 
from the Latin dominarium, lordship, linking the keep and feudal authority. Similarly, medieval Spanish writers called the buildings Torre del Homnia, or, place of homage. In England, Don Juan turned into dungeon, which initially referred to a keep, rather than to a place of imprisonment. This ambiguity, over terminology has made historical analysis of the use of keeps, problematic. While the term remains in common academic use, some academics prefer to use the term Don Juan. And most modern historians warn against using the term, keep, simplistically. The fortifications that we would today, call keeps certainly did not necessarily form part of a unified medieval style, nor were they all used in a similar fashion during the period. Timber Keeps, 9th-12th centuries The earliest keeps were built as part of Mott and Bailey castles. From the 10th century onwards a combination of documentary and archaeological evidence places the first such castle, built at Van C, in 979. These castles were initially built by the more powerful lords of Anjou in the late 10th and 11th centuries, in particular Fulk III and his son, Geoffrey II, who built a great number of them between 987 and 1060. William the Conqueror then introduced this form of castle into England when he invaded in 1066, and the design spread through South Wales as the Normans expanded up the valleys. During the subsequent decades, in a Mott and Bailey design, a castle would include a mound called a Mott, usually artificially constructed by piling up turf and soil, and a Bailey, a lower walled enclosure, a keep, and a protective wall would usually be built on top of the Mott. Some protective walls around a keep would be large enough to have a wall walk around them, and the outer walls of the Mott and the wall walk could be strengthened by filling in the gap between the wooden walls with earth and stones, allowing it to carry more weight this was called the gorillum. Smaller mots could only support simple towers, with room for a few soldiers, whilst larger mots could be equipped with a much grander keep. Many wooden keeps were designed with a bretash, a square structure that overhung from the upper floors of the building, enabling better defences and a more sturdy structural design. These wooden keeps could be protected by skins and hides to prevent them being easily set alight during a siege. One contemporary account of these keeps comes from Jean de Colmu around 1130, who described how the nobles of the Calais region would build a mound of earth as high as they can and dig a ditch about it as wide and deep as possible. The space on top of the mound is enclosed by a palisade of very strong hewn logs, strengthened at intervals by as many towers as their means can provide. Inside the enclosure is a citadel, or keep, which commands the whole circuit of the defences. The entrance to the fortress is by means of a bridge which, rising from the outer side of the moat, and supported on posts as it ascends, reaches to the top of the mound. At Durham Castle, contemporaries described how the keep arose from the tumulus of rising earth with a keep reaching into thin air, strong within and without, a stalwart house dock glittering with beauty in every part, as well as having defensive value, keeps, and mots sent a powerful political message to the local population. Wooden keeps could be quite extensive in size and, as Robert Hyam and Philip Barker have noted, it was possible to build dot very tall and massive structures, as an example of what these keeps may have comprised, the early 12th century chronicler Lambert of Vardas described the wooden keep on top of the Mott at the castle of Vardas, where the dot first story was on the surface of the ground, where were cellars and granaries, and great boxes, tons, casks, and other domestic utensils. In the story above were the dwelling and common living rooms of the residents in which were the larders, the rooms of the bakers, and butlers, and the great chamber in which the lord and his wife slept. In the upper story of the house were garret rooms, in this story also the watchmen and the servants appointed to keep the house took their sleep. In the Holy Roman Empire, tall, freestanding wooden towers called Bergfrieda were commonly built by the 11th century, either as part of Mott and Bailey designs or 
as part of Hohenberg and Castles, with characteristic inner and outer courts. Bergfrieder, which take their name from the German for a belfry, had similarities to keeps, but are usually distinguished from them on account of Bergfriede having a smaller area or footprint, usually being non-residential, and being typically integrated into the outer defenses of a castle, rather than being a safe refuge of last resort. Thank you for watching, brought to you by wikivd.com. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.